Hello, everyone, and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox, and today I am joined by a very special ho- co-host. We're here today with Ben Pegg. Hello, Ben. Hey, how are you doing, David? I'm very good. So uh, we have started, this is the first in a series of tutorial videos that we are going to be creating all around the software known as GarageBand. And uh, we're going to be mixing it up a little bit. We'll be talking about the version for the iPad as well as the Mac, uh, kind of focusing in this uh, particular series around the Mac side. Um, But we really just kind of want to give you an overview of what the software is capable of. Now, in the past, when I've done a lot of classes on various pieces of software, I tend to do one class and cover as much as possible. And what's a little bit different about GarageBand is that GarageBand has dramatically evolved over the years to the point where right now you can do anything from something that's really kind of an amateur-ish project to something that's borderline professional. In fact, Ben, what were you telling me uh, the other day about there was some uh, musician who I guess is is now was using GarageBand in a pro environment? Yes, uh, Tom York, his album The Eraser was recorded on the road uh, on GarageBand uh, during his tour of uh, Hail to the Thief. And he's the lead singer of Radiohead. That's right. Right. So um, really just the the amount of places you can take the software is practically endless. So in this first video, we're going to just kind of give you an overview of the software, kind of show you where to find everything. And then in some of the other follow-up videos that we're going to do, uh, we're going to get very, very specific, like show you how to auto-tune, how to enable multi-track recording, that kind of thing. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to kind of have fun with it and uh, discover along the way. So we're going to open up an empty project and just start to kind of show you the different uh, features that we have here. Now you'll see that when you create a brand new project, you can either use a software instrument or you can use a real instrument, whether that's using a microphone or a line to, you know, a uh, an amp or, or a guitar, something like that. There's also this brand new feature in the latest version, which we have played with a little bit today, and I have to say is really pretty damn cool, which is drummer. And the drummer just kind of automatically plays along with you as you're creating your song. It's pretty far out stuff. Now, uh, when dealing with this kind of a project, you're going to have probably some sort of an input. So um, in our case here, Ben, what's what's the name of this equipment we have here? Uh, We've got a Universal Audio Apollo. And uh, it's not inexpensive software, but uh, hardware rather, but they make two different versions, right? And can, yes. can you give us an idea of the two different versions and what they do? Sure. They have a Duo, which is something that you can plug into a laptop. It's got two inputs, so you can have a microphone and a guitar, for example. And that one runs about $700. And the real heart of it is that it runs these amazing sounding plugins. Okay, so really getting you that, uh, if you've ever seen like what a, a, a soundstage looks like, getting you the, the ability to do all of that without having to have, you know, half a million dollars worth of equipment, you can, it's just, it's all digital, right? Yes, they're digital models of really popular and famous analog effects. Definitely very handy if you're going to use that to have more than one monitor, because uh, I'm looking at one of them right here and it's big. So um, let's just kind of go into using just a microphone line for now. You'll also see here uh, at the bottom, there's an option to check this box here to allow you to hear the instrument as you play it. Obviously, you are only going to enable that if you are using headphones. I don't have headphones on right now, so I am not going to do that. Let's hit create. Okay. Now, for those of you who have used GarageBand in the past, uh, this is an example of one of those pieces of software where it's gone through a lot of change. You know, with something like, for example, with Pages or iPhoto, those changes tend to be pretty minor. At this stage of the game, GarageBand has gone from really, really amateurish to, holy cow, this thing can actually be used for producing. So uh, when you first open up, on the left-hand side here, this column, we have our library. Okay, so uh, if I go into voice, it can add these various types of effects to my voice. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of just starting off, you'll probably want to try something like natural or bright, something like that. We also have different effects you can add to your acoustic guitar, electric guitar, or legacy effects. Then over here, this is your various tracks. In this case, we only have one track. But if you ever want to add an additional track, just go up here to where it says track and hit new track. Now, if you're doing sort of like what Ben and I were actually recording earlier, 
Uh, if you know that the settings are going to be the same on multiple tracks, you can just set one up and then hit new track with duplicate settings. That way you don't have to go through that whole process all over again. And then of course over here we have our timeline and that's where it's going to show the sound waves as we're producing them. Now up here at the top we have a whole bunch of different controls here. Okay, This just simply toggles the library so once you have everything sec selected here you really don't need this. You can pretty much hide it um, presuming that's okay for whatever project you're doing. I am going to right now go into full screen mode just so we can get some of those distractions to go away. Next we have here a little question mark box. That will basically turn on these little balloons to kind of help you understand what the various buttons here do. It's not a bad idea when you're first starting off, but hopefully we're going to cover a good chunk of that uh, during today's class. Uh, the next feature here is we have these smart controls. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about smart controls? Sure. The smart controls are going to give you the settings that you have on the tracks that you're working on. Right now we don't have a track selected, so you'll notice that uh, we're not really seeing very much down here. Um, we're going to go into the info panel where this I is. And then you can see some of the recording settings as well as plug-in settings, which we'll probably go into in a later video, how to turn those on and off. And what's also kind of cool about the plugins is that you don't have to just use the ones that come with GarageBand. You can also import third-party effects like the ones that you got from this Universal, Universal Audio. That's right. That's right. So at this point, you, this starts to deal with some obviously much more complex settings, things that you're going to get into if you're more of an advanced user. Next up here, we have your editor. Okay, uh, so in one of our future videos, we're going to talk about uh, using Auto-Tune. You can do that through here, um, but all of those settings you'll find right there. We have your basic audio settings up here as far as rewinding, fast-forwarding. This will actually fast-forward one bar. Okay, this next button here will rewind to the beginning of the track. Of course, your play button and your record button. Ben, you want to walk us through some of the other options here? Yes, uh, this is showing you where you are in your in your musical performance, your bar, your beat, your your tick number. You have the uh, tempo of the song. So if you're playing with some of the effects uh, that have like delay, you want that delay to be in the same time signature that you're playing in. So you're going to want to make sure that you're set to having a metronome here and that you're playing. Uh, in time with it so that those effects work properly and more importantly so that if you're playing with the drummer or you're playing with smart bass or smart guitar that those things are going to be lining up in time. Very good. You can also of course determine the key. Now if you're you're only going to need that in certain cases. If you're playing your own instruments you're not going to really need to deal with that but if you're dealing with a, a software instrument you are going to need to know what key you want these to to take effect in. Also uh, same thing is going to be true if you're using auto tune, you need to do you do need to make sure uh, if you want it to sound really good, what key it's in. Your time signature, of course, is right here. All right. Next, we have uh, cycle options. We have your tuner. So if you have a instrument, you need to tune it. We can turn that on. Let's see, is that going on monitor too? I don't know. Anyways, next here we have a timer. Sorry, sorry to count in. So when you go to hit the record button, you want to have a little heads up that it's about to begin. Uh, the metronome or click, okay, will just kind of give you the beat in your headset. Definitely very handy if you are using a headset. Your volume, of course, master volume. Uh, you have a notepad now, so if you want to take notes as you're writing, whether it's maybe lyrics that are coming to you, you can put them all right here. Probably I wouldn't, I don't know about you, Ben, but I wouldn't think that would be maybe the best idea to use that. I'd use an actual notepad or pages or Word or anything else, but hey, it's there if you want it. Uh, next here we have the Apple Loops, and Apple Loops is one of the most magical parts of this software. So these are great for getting inspiration. Um, you can see just there's a giant, giant list of loops here. And it's everything from sound effects to music. So let's say I need some piano loops, okay? I can click on piano in this list. And I can just double click on these and I can start to hear how they sound. I can actually drag these into my project and the part where the loop comes in is they can repeat over and over again. So for example, let's just play one here. Okay, that was just really 
one chord. Uh, let's see if we have something maybe better. Do we have audio? Oh, sorry. There we go. I don't know what happened there. But anyways, we got that. So uh, if, when you find a loop that you want, if you should want to add a loop, you just literally drag it and drop it right into your project. And you can see it adds it all right there. Pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, finally over here, we have a media uh, option, media browser. So this would be if you're bringing in other audio, like for example, let's say you have something in iTunes, you want to bring it in here, or maybe something in a different GarageBand project that you now want to kind of mesh with this, you could drag and drop that in from right there. So that does it for kind of a very, very basic overview of where everything is here. And what we're going to do is in our next tutorial video, we're going to start to go through some of the different preferences uh, that you're going to find in GarageBand, especially the ones that you are going to want to set up correctly before you begin your project if you want to have the absolute clearest audio possible which I think pretty much everyone else does. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this class. We, of course, do appreciate your feedback. Please leave us comments in the section below. Uh, this video is going to be, once again, part of a series of tutorial videos that we're creating on GarageBand. So we really hope you enjoy it. It's very complex software. It's easy to get lost. And that's the reason why with this particular series, we would, we're preferring to do shorter classes rather than one long one. This is David A. Cox, along with my co-host, Ben Pegg. And we'll see you next time. That's all for today, everyone. Class dismissed.